If you're going through a relationship problem, you want to talk to somebody. It's criminal to just keep those emotions pent up in you. And guess who the person you want to talk to the most is? The person you're probably going through the problem with, but they don't understand. That's why you're having the problem. Something that you're saying to them isn't making sense to them and something that they're trying to do isn't making sense to you. There's some conflict that's going on here and that's why you have a relationship problem. So who do you talk to? The thing is, you have to be very careful who you talk to for reasons that you don't want to express too much and for reasons that they might give you the wrong advice. Because when you vent to someone, you're getting advice from them. They're giving you their input and you wanna be very careful on who you get input from because it can drastically alter the course of your relationship. What's up guys, Sue me here today and I'm gonna be talking about the five people that you never want to talk to about your relationship problems. If you're new to this channel, subscribe, like the video and hit the bell notification to know when I'm dropping new videos. That being said, let's get right into it. Number one, random people. Right, this one's pretty obvious. Why are you sharing the private information about your private relationship to someone that has nothing to do with you? It doesn't really make any sense, does it? And these random people might have trauma. They might have experiences that don't really coincide and resonate with your beliefs. You don't even know who they really are. And sometimes it feels good to talk to a stranger about some deep emotional problem. But if that stranger is not an expert in the area that you're talking to them about, they're probably gonna give you the wrong advice. Talking to strangers is a fun thing when it comes to things that are lighthearted, not serious relationship problems or marriage problems or situations that you have with your fiance. This is a no-no. So you wanna stay away from random people and most importantly, it's kind of TMI. They're gonna look at you kind of weird for sharing so much about an intimate relationship that you have. Now, this might be good if you're talking about an ex because that's something you can laugh about. That's a lighthearted situation, provided that you got over it and it wasn't traumatic in a sense. Number two, social media. Now, this is technically not a person, but a lot of people put their relationship info on social media. Look, when you talk negatively about someone that you're dating or in a relationship with, guess what that makes you look like? An idiot. Yeah, because you're dating them, because you're investing time with them, because you're choosing them as your partner and you're representing yourself as a partnership. So when you are talking negatively about someone, you're basically shooting yourself in the foot. You cannot do this. And honestly, it's TMI. People aren't gonna feel bad for you. People on social media are fake. You gotta understand that people are gonna message you and swipe up and say this, that, and the third. A lot of times it might be because they see an opportunity to get with you, especially if you're a girl, or it's because they're just taking fun in you not having a proper relationship. Look, when you put stuff on social media like emotional quotes or that this person did that or you're trying to hurt somebody in a way, you look bad because you're involved in it. You look unstable. I'm not saying that you need to maintain this perfect personality and everything on social media is just a perfect image of your life. But then the day, when it comes to your private relationship, you don't wanna to share too much of this info. And you don't wanna take advice from people on social media because they know nothing about you. They're just like category number one, except this time they're gonna judge you, screenshot and send it to whoever to make fun of you. Number three, your friends. Yep, that's right, I said it, your friends. Your friends are not good to talk to, guys. Your friends are on your side. Your friends are ride or die, especially if they're real ones. So if I tell a situation to my friend about a girl that I'm dating and it didn't go well, guess what he's gonna do? You don't need her, man. I got you. Let's go out. Let's go have some more fun. There's tons of girls out there that'll treat you the way you wanna be treated. That's what friends are supposed to do. That's what good friends are supposed to do. They're never gonna analyze the problems that you had in the relationship because sometimes in a relationship, you might be the problem or you might be someone that doesn't understand how to compromise on the situation. Your friends are not the ones you want to talk to because they're biased towards you. And whenever you have bias, it's never gonna give you an honest and logical solution. It's gonna give you something that's emotionally based and more so relationship based. At the end of the day too, your friends should have your back. Your friends should be biased because they're your friends. They should be with you through the relationship to help you get over all the pain and the emotional sadness that you have. So they're not really gonna give you honest and concrete advice. Honestly, the advice they'll give you is gonna be very one-sided that will reinforce your mindset and it will probably cause you guys to fight even more, to be more reinforced in the disagreement. And that's not good for your relationship altogether. Number four, their friends. This is suicide a lot of times because guess what? They're their friends. You don't think they're gonna tell them? You don't think they're gonna inform them? I understand the idea behind this. Maybe let me talk to his friend so that he can talk to him or maybe let me get his perspective. Right, that's good in theory, but a lot of times it does not work this way. And when you're reaching out to his friends, it shows vulnerability in you. It shows that you're not really clear on the situation and you're trying to make it right. And that will give them an opportunity to beat you at whatever compromise you're trying to have. You've gotta understand in a situation 
situation where you're not agreeing with your partner, it's about you guys coming to a compromise. But when you're reaching here and you're reaching there and you're going out of your way to make sure this compromise exists, you come off thirsty, you come off needy, you come off way too available, and it comes off manipulative. And then they might manipulate you. Their friends are probably going to tell them, give them the intel, and that's going to cause more conflict because he's going to be reinforced or she's going to be reinforced and you're going to be reinforced in whatever you're doing. Number five, this is the worst one, your family. My sister said this. My brother said this. Look, your family is the most diehard squad for you. If you kill somebody, your family's still going to visit you in prison. If you do the worst things in the world, your family is going to have your back because guess what? They're your family. They're not going to understand the other person. Parents are probably the worst. Parents view their children as princesses or princes of their kingdom. Why would they ever side against them? Yeah, in some situations, your family might be good. They may be able to mediate certain things in a benefit to you. And I understand your family is your safe haven. But at the same time, your family is not good to talk to because when you constantly bring problems to your family, they're going to not like that individual. And if things do get settled, they're still going to have those residual beliefs that this person is not good for you. And that's not good because you want your person your partner to get along with your family in a natural sense. If you keep bringing problems to your family and keep running to your family and keep running to mom and dad about situations, it's not going to work well because they're going to side with you every single time, no matter what you did. You could cheat on this person a lot of times and your family will still side with you. So who do I talk to then? Who is the person that I go to? Do I just talk to nobody? No, that's not the case. You want to talk to someone that understands relationships. You want to talk to someone that's a relationship coach. And this is what we do here at ThoughtCast. This is the biggest thing I tell people. If you're going through problems in a relationship, talk to someone that knows how a relationship works. And then people get upset because they have to invest time, energy, and resources into a relationship coach. Well, you've invested time, energy, and resources into the relationship. Every single time you go out to dinner, you're spending money. Every single time you go to a vacation, you're spending money. Every single time you do something with that partner, you're naturally spending your time, energy, and resources. And that person is your partner, your significant other, who you're going to probably spend time, energy, and resources with for the rest of your life, if it lines up. But when it comes to working on relationships, people are so scared. They feel like it's inorganic. Look, when you're building a house, you talk to somebody who knows how to build a house. When you're buying real estate, you talk to someone that knows about the real estate market. When you're investing in your financial portfolio, I hope you're talking to a financial planner. And when you're trying to work through the problems in your relationship, you talk to someone that knows relationship communication, manipulation, psychology, and the dating dynamics of the modern era. You talk to someone that's a relationship coach. Do not talk to people that are biased and people that have nothing to do with your relationship. You're ultimately going to hurt yourself in the relationship and you're going to make yourself and the relationship look stupid. That being said, guys, make sure you talk to someone that knows what they're doing when you're going through a relationship. You can book with the link in ThoughtCast or there's tons of qualified relationship coaches out there that you can choose from. That being said, if you haven't subscribed, please go ahead and do so. It really helps us out. We have new videos coming out every single week. Like this video for the algorithm and hit that bell notification for new updates on new videos. That being said, guys, I'm gonna leave the info down below and I'll see you next time.